Happy Monday, all you Minties. This is the Uncanny Omar from Near Min Condition. And join me today as I take an advanced look at the War of the Realms Omnibus from Marvel Comics. So, please stay tuned. And welcome back, everybody. Now, before I get started, I do want to give a huge thank you and shout out to David Gabriel and the folks at Marvel for sending us an advanced copy of this omnibus. Uh, now, originally, I had the date of this omnibus, by the way, it keeps changing. Uh, it was supposed to be September 23rd. However, the most updated release date that I have for the direct market is October 14th. So, that is places like GeographicNovels.com, your local comic book shop, in stock trades and tells of wonder so october 14th hopefully it won't change anymore we've had a lot of issues because of the pandemic with releases and delays so hopefully that will be when it comes out so this is a real far advanced review um, because i really thought it was coming out in 23 days here so let's take a look at it really quick this is by the way the biggest marvel omnibus in as far as page count so really quick Wanted to do a quick size comparison. So War of the Realms, like I said, is the biggest Marvel omnibus. It is 1,576 pages. Both Deadpool by Potion and Duggan and Heroes Reborn omnibus are at 1,360. And both of those are the second biggest Marvel omnibus. And here it is compared to the two biggest DC Omnis. And that is Blackest Night at 1,664 pages and Final Crisis at 1,512. I swear this is not a contest of which publisher is making the biggest books, but more of a size comparison so you get an understanding of what the spines look like, even though this book has more pages than this particular book. Now, besides this book being the biggest Marvel omnibus, there's also two covers. There is the beautiful Arthur Adams cover, and this is the Russell Dodderman cover. The book retails for $125. There is the spine. We'll talk about the story here as we flip through some of those pages. And here is the back, including all the content down here. Oh, there's that Arthur Adams artwork right there. So let's get this opened after we look at this awesome map under the dust jacket. It's really cool. It's got the different realms and the locations. And not to worry, I've stretched out the spine a couple of times. Now, let's get this open and talk about the story. And let's open it up. Okay, we have brick colored bookend pages, which is the color of the border that they would use around a comic book if it was crossing over with the War of the Realms. Here is your table of contents. I assume these are the first two pages, what it includes, and we'll talk about what it includes here in a little bit. And there's the third page. And kind of give you a quick synopsis as to what's happened right before War of the Realms starts. As a matter of fact, it includes the prelude issues. So you're getting Thor, 8 through 11 and kind of setting up the story of War of the Realms. The biggest and most important question I'm sure I'm going to get, and i got to be really careful as I flip through here, is how is it mapped, right? When you have a big crossover like this, I find it to be a difficult task if you're in the Collected Editions department. And speaking of, it's a little harder to read because it's orange on brick red, but here are all the wonderful folks that mapped this and put this book together. Jeff Youngquist, Mark Beasley, Jennifer Grunewald, Maya Loy, Jeff York, Jay Bowen, who did the book design, and David Gabriel. And it's always a difficult task to see how to map out a big event. Do you just keep the miniseries together and then put the rest of the issues later on? Because I think issues of Thor really impact those other issues of War of the Realms. So let's look at it as we get there. By the way, Angela now, if you don't know, is hanging out in the Marvel Universe and she has ties with the God of Thunder. Created by Neil Gaiman and Tom McFarlane in the pages of Spawn. After that fallout of the lawsuit and everything else, Neil Gaiman won and ended up uh, giving Angela over to the Marvel Universe. So that's where she is hanging out now. So let's talk about content and then we'll look at how it's mapped out. The contents of the book, as I mentioned, is huge. There's a lot. So all six issues of the War of the Realms are included in here. The epilogue, the War of the Realm Omega is in here. Then you have the War Scrolls, which is a three issue miniseries. Strike Force, Land of the Giants one. The Strike Force, Dark Elf Realm one. The War Avengers one shot, Giant Man one, two, and three. 
Journey into Mystery, the five-issue miniseries. Spider-Man and the League of the Realms, that's a three-issue miniseries. War of the Realms Punisher, which is freaking phenomenal. Uh, all three issues of that is included in here. The Uncanny X-Men, where actually some things happen, some characters die. Uh, but don't worry, Hox Pox fixes all that. That three-issue miniseries is included in here. The new Agents of Atlas, four-issue miniseries. That was a big surprise. I really enjoyed that. As Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, 8 through 10, so finishing out that series. Long before Thor mentioned it in Avengers Endgame. And here is some of that beautiful artwork by Russell Dodderman. But before we go there, uh, let's talk about what else this includes. Tony Stark, Iron Man 12 and 13, Venom 13 through 15, not included in any other oversized hardcover, by the way, because it's not written by Donny Cates, so it's not going to be in Volume 2, and it's not in Absolute Carnage, the omnibus. Thor, and this is the really important part, 8 through 16, so it includes all of that. Avengers 18 through 20. Those are other tie-in issues written by Jason Aaron. Captain Marvel 6 and 7, Champions 5 and 6, Deadpool 13 and 14. Even Deadpool gets to join in on the fun. Fantastic Four number 10, Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur number 43. I had no idea that book went on so long. Uh, that's awesome. My daughter really likes that book. Spider-Man, or Superior Spider-Man rather, 7 and 8, and Unbeatable Squirrel Girl 43 through 46. And that is pretty much all of it collected in here now let's go back and talk about the story and what what is war of the realms without giving any spoilers first looking at this beautiful arthur adams cover really really wish the man would draw internal artwork i know it would take forever but it is so well worth it uh here are all the key players i think jason aaron does a pretty good job of letting you catch up in case you haven't been reading his Thor run. So for seven years, Jason Aaron had been writing Thor, and he's been leading up to this big war that's coming throughout all the realms, and all of it is led by the Dark Elf, Malachi, who you've probably seen in the movies, in case you're not familiar with Thor. Yeah, this guy right here. We've done an old reader, new reader of his first two story arcs, which is the God of Thunder, and then the Jane Foster Thor. Uh, but by now, Odin's son is back as Thor, and yeah, he's got to deal with all these villains teaming up with Malachi throughout the different realms, and they want to conquer everything, not just Asgard, Midgard, and all the other realms. They want it to belong to them. So, without giving spoilers, it looks like they are putting in the issues of Thor, which is good, important, in between the issues of the War of the Realms. So that's good, because there are important things that happen in Thor that affect the War of the Realms issues, as I've mentioned before. And, oh, man, what a scene. You'll want to read that Punisher wow, War of the Realms miniseries. It's freaking awesome. Here's the cover from the back. This is Arthur Adams. And you can probably tell why Venom 13 through 15 are included in here. Uh, just from that cover alone. Not going to specify why. So it's an all-out war between good guys, not just Thor, but all of his friends here from Midgard. The X-Men, the Avengers, they all team up against the forces of Malachi. By the way, the variant covers are scattered throughout the volume, so you'll get some in between pages of War of the Realms and pages of the comics. Let's keep going through here with this beautiful artwork by Russell Dodderman, who was his penciler or artist on the Jane Foster run of Thor. And I'm just going to flip through the back here without giving anything away because I would hate to spoil this for anybody. I'm going to start flipping here uh, to the middle. So what this does include, in, it does include the epilogues like War of the Realms Omega that is included in here. So you, this is the aftermath of what happens in the War of the Realms, as well as Thor 16, which wraps up that volume of Thor. And this, of course, is the aftermath of what happens in War of the Realms. Okay, we can look at that. Not much of spoilers. What it doesn't include, though, is King Thor, the four-issue miniseries. And that definitely takes place after it. It's, that is Jason Aaron's final run on Thor. That's his last story arc. It's been collected in trade paperback, but I don't know if that's going to be collected in oversized hardcover or not. So this has a little bit of double dipping if you have the Thor Volume 4 oversized hardcover. 
uh, just a little bit. It's got about three issues, I think. And here are the Avenger issues. Oh, there's some awesome stories in the War Scrolls. Uh, really dealing with Daredevil and Punisher. And I thought the X-Men one was pretty good. Uh, the New Agents of Atlas was awesome, and it kind of spun out, and it became its own series. A lot of breakout characters there. I was sad to see Asgardians of the Galaxy end. It was a short-lived series, but it was I thought it was done so well. I wish it had continued. Again, just showing some more variant covers in between pages. So pretty much what you get in the first part is the main story arc, right? Look at that awesome cover. This is the variant cover, by the way, which I showed earlier. This is full variant cover of what it looks like, but it's the cover to War of the Realms issue six. So you get the main story at the beginning of the omnibus, the prelude leading up to it with issues of Thor, the War of the Realms six issue series, and then the Thor issues that go in between. Everything else is back here towards the back. And what you read is really up to you. It, it really depends. Do you want to follow the story threads that spin out of the tie-ins? Uh, do you want to just follow the characters that you like and enjoy? Or do you just want to read it all? I think it was a good decision to put all the main story in the front and then keeping these in the back. Yes, I would have loved to have seen that, especially that Daredevil from uh, the War Scrolls in here towards the very beginning. But it makes sense because if you start adding tie-in issues, then it would break the story apart. And it'd be kind of harder to follow, especially if you have 20 issues in between each part. Oh, yes. So here's where Arrow and the Sword Masters debuted. And this is, of course, the War of the Realms, New Agents of Atlas. This is done by Greg Pak. And that was a surprisingly good story. Now, I think I've talked enough about it without giving any spoilers away. There's your Ryan North Squirrel Girl. Let's look in the back to see if they kept extras in the back. And, of course, they did. So here are some more variant covers. This book probably would have been uh, 1,800 pages if each of the variant cover was given a full page. And here's some more variants. I'm not going to go through all of them, but here are some character sketches. Making sure I don't spoil anything if I have to skip some pages. Oh, and you even get some of the X-Men character sketches from the X-Men run. That's, I gotta say, that's a pretty badass looking Venom. Now, the other question I'm going to get, I'm sure, is what about this binding and paper quality? How did they keep it from just being so tight, such a rat trap? Because if you saw, and by mousetrap, I mean those DC books from the earlier days that just kept shutting on you, like the 52 and the original printing of Infinite Crisis. Um, as you can tell, I'm literally here towards the end and it's staying open. Let's, again... Eh, more variants, but no, that's not what we're talking about. I'm four pages into the omnibus, and it's staying opened. Again, though, I want to stress that I did stretch my spine out twice because it's a big omnibus. Um, and if you want to know how to do that, I made a video of that a couple of months ago. How to properly open up an omnibus, as ridiculous as that sounds. I think it's very helpful to people that are new to reading these big books. Sewn binding, there is that big eye. Look at that. And that's why it can stay open. And the other big question I'm going to get, besides, is the story any good? And yes, it is. Is, what about any gutter loss? As you can see here is a splash page from the beginning of the story. Um, really very minimal. You can see the sewn pages uh, in here. So that's always a good sign that the pages are going to open wide and there's no gutter loss. So it's very minimal. Here it is towards the two-thirds of the book. So, again, very minimal, if any. And in the middle of the book, there's hardly any at all. Now, let's look in the back here. Sometimes when doing these videos, the hard part is actually trying to find splash pages when I need them. And here it is towards the back of the book. Um, again, very minimal, just because that eye. And again, I have stretched out my spine and opened it properly. As far as the paper quality, literally it is the same paper quality that they've been using in recent Marvel Omnibu. So, I mean, if you're used to that, it's no thinner than that. So you kind of know what to expect, especially if you're used to the paper quality that's been coming out in recent years. And that is War of the Realms. Now, when this omnibus does come out, you can pick it up from our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for brand new graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off the cover price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on packaging your books so they arrive safely and in excellent condition, as well as prompt and helpful service. And check out their bargain bin for even greater deals up to 90% off cover price. And for you minties, 
Cheap Graphic Novels is renting a special promotion. If you're a first time customer, let them know you were referred by Near Mint Condition at the checkout and you'll receive a credit for free shipping on your next order. Now this is only for US customers. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discounts, quality shipping and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the contents, the page count and the build of this omnibus. Let me know if you're excited to pick it up, if you've got the trade paperbacks, if you've only read The War of the Realms and none of the tie-ins, or any of the issues that crossed over with it. I would love to know all those comments down below, and of course, which cover are you getting? Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe button if you haven't subscribed yet. Ring that bell for notifications to let you know when our videos are going live. We can be found on Patreon and Redbubble, those are great ways to support the channel. And more importantly, please everybody stay healthy, stay safe, and much love to all of you.